Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for patiently waiting as we prepared for our next matchup of the day, G-Men versus SEAL Team Bravo. And we talked about SEAL Team Bravo being a bit uh, of an unknown in terms of what they're going to deliver to us today. And looking at the score lines, you can see there, they took a... They lost two maps, but I guess you can't see on that. They lost two maps, but one of them they took to 4-3 against Mayhem. And so SEAL Team Bravo is definitely bringing it today. Uh, G-Men is not going to be an easy task for them, but very interested to see how STB do against G-Men on... Uh, what I, I guess, I guess what we can talk about what maps we're going to be going to. Uh, Snooper, what do we have for bands today? Well, G-Men, they're banning quarantine again. It seems to be a map they are not favoring, so they're just keeping it out of the pool. And STB is, or SEAL Team Bravo, is banning Suburbia, another close range map. So it looks like they're going to, I mean, with Cargo being our first map, that's definitely going to break this, but all that's left are pretty longer range maps. Bizarre is probably the closest range map they'll get, but there's still pretty long ranges in there. And for G-Men, uh, I mean, we just saw them play against Boss Fight and successfully yeah. deal with a team that is pretty much specializes in the long-range play. So I could definitely see G-Men feeling a little bit more comfortable with those kind of maps being left up on the board. But STB being almost virtually all wild cards, uh, I have to question whether STB would want longer range maps. So if you're right. mostly doing lone wolf plays, you want the closer range stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. You know, maybe STB bring that sort, of, bring the coordination that's gonna be able to throw off the likes of G-Men. I, you know, I don't know what uh, the future holds in this series. I do know that on cargo, G-Men are very powerful. You know, they are a very strong team uh, on these close quarters maps. Uh, it is not going to be easy to uproot them here, uh, and it's why we saw a boss fight ban it. At the same extent, it's also why. Suburbia is being banned here because G-Men did just play it very well against Boss Fight. Cargo will definitely play into those strengths. <laughs> G-Men definitely love their close range plays. So Cargo is definitely going to be a good starter for them. Uh, STB, SEAL Team Bravo. Like we said, wild cards, lone wolves, whether they can play together is really going to be the determinant here. Uh, hmm. All vet veteran players, they played in the league on multiple teams, so they're not foreign to playing on a team and dealing with team tactics so right. definitely don't count them out no we cannot we are still waiting for the lobby to populate we will cut to a much shorter intermission and then when we come back we will dive right in to map one of this series round two of group a round robin don't go anywhere we'll be right back
Welcome back, everybody, to the Onward VR Master League round robin group A stage. Here we have G Men versus SEAL Team Bravo. A very hyped matchup. SEAL Team Bravo. A bit of underdogs going into this series. I'm curious to see how they go up against the likes of Brass Without Diesel. Finds one kill right out the gate. And it's a good start for this defense. Out and over. Catching out anyone and suppressive fire raining in from Keija on the back end. Interesting defense that no one pushed over to the objective area, the or at least made it past the pre fire line. Maybe they're playing the cargo containers like Global Gun last season, right? Khan's coming in from G-Men, trying to ID what the sort of strategy is. No cross coming in, does give them information. Nade comes out over the top, finds Diesel. A solid bit of Nade work there. I don't think it's going to be resible either. Hondo can't pick up anything. So they are down one on this diamond. Uh, it's not the diamond objective, but on this diamond defense, they are down one. Flash coming out over the top, just putting rounds down range off of that. Doesn't catch anybody out. He's going to have to continue to work his way up to this defense that is patiently waiting for him. It's moving quick, so hopefully Raz can pick him out. Drummer catching down two on there. the drop. Windows here, the man tries to swing. Raz picks up two through the center. Seal Team Bravo with a solid defensive hold. Deny G Men entry into their diamond. And they go up one and nil to kick things off. The Seal Team Bravo effectively bottled the G Man push into that center area. And that's exactly what you want to do, especially on a nice, strong push. <laughs> you couldn't ask for a better defense there. Really, really well done there from SEAL Team Bravo to shut them down. And maybe just not quite fast enough from G-Man. It seemed like they were almost hesitant to push into that uh, that diamond uh, defense. And the little bit of hesitation works in SEAL Team Bravo's favor. And, and they now have a lead on G-Man's map pick. That's a good way to start. You can just sit there and enjoy your point up and maybe take a loss or two if you need to. But... Yep. I mean, this is the way you want to start it off against a team like G-Man. Just put them on the ropes and keep the pressure up. Get that momentum going. We'll see what they can do. Okay, a quick look at the rosters for today, since we haven't done that yet. Over on SEAL Team Bravo, we have Stay Calm, Raz, Drunk Drummer, Diesel, and Hondo. And over on G-Man, we have the man, Nintendo, Zach Fontaine, Keija, and Brass to Mouth. Two powerful teams with powerful players, good rosters filled with veterans, like we were saying in that pre-show. And I expect, honestly, a pretty good back and forth. Can't count G-Men out at any point in a series. They're a team that bounces back well, and we'll see what they can do as we hop in to round two. Man, make sure you don't crouch in front of me. Okay. I'm trying to fire too. Ready, Ross? Gonna keep our eye on Keija. He's gonna make an aggressive defensive push up into the tunnel here. And I wonder if anyone's ID'd him. The man scoops up Raz trying to cross out. A good nade comes in. This could get two. It gets Diesel at the very least. He's just gonna push up off of that. Bit of confirm. Flashes out. Doesn't quite get it. Far enough. A follow-up nade's gonna confirm Diesel. Almost gets Staycom, and Staycom swings looking for the kills. Can't get those. Very aggressive defense from G-Man here. Yeah. He's should practically playing an offensive maneuver here. It's something you would do if you're attacking this side of the map, but not the case. Keija able to get one before he gets scooped up by Staycom. More nades, flashes, utility coming into Staycom's direction. Those aren't going to find him just yet, but now it's a 2v4 for SEAL Team Bravo with the res available, so should turn into a 3v4. 
And that red's definitely gonna go out. Stay calm, identifies where Brass is, takes some fire, but that's all they really need to know to start chipping away at that defense, and he does. Drummer takes down Brass to mouth. Metal. Solid backup there from Drummer to find him through the center. The man's pushed up into a bit of an interesting spot. Drummer tries to stay low, doesn't work out for him. The man finds one. Hondo's looking for the refrag. Staycom isn't paying attention. Yes, he is. Scoops up the man on his swing, and now he's close. Getting closer, excuse me, to that objective. The diamond under his control. Hondo's here to reinforce him. We'll see if this duo can go up against Zack and Nintendo. They've been doing great so far, pushing through the G-Man defense, taking down everyone in their way. They lost Drummer, but I I think they have full control of that center area. Hondo can effectively move through there without taking any fire from Tendo or Zach. One dead tunnel. Tendo finds Stay Calm. It's all down to Hondo. Nintendo's in a solid spot. He's in that dark alleyway right there. He has a good angle on objective. He can hold it well. Zach's in a bit of a tough spot to uh, to uh, to root out unless you have utility. And so I'm curious to see what Hondo's plan is going to be. But don't think he has any nades left. Oh, and Zach Fontaine finds Hondo from the rear and ends it for G-Man. And they take the round. Nice. A nice attempt from G-Men there, but ultimately not quite enough to push them, uh, excuse me, from uh, SEAL Team Bravo. Uh, it's enough for G-Men. It gets them that W, and this is what uh, we saw at the start of our last series, the exchange of Volk rounds. I anticipate it to be a continuing trend here in this series as well as uh, we tie things up one apiece. Yeah, that was a rather difficult objective. It's especially for the defense, but both teams handled it very well. You have to cross that pipeline, which is a very long sight line that can get a lot of pre-fire down, as we yep. saw in both rounds. Uh, so it's really a risk to try and put players over there initially on defense, but both teams were able to successfully do it and hold their objectives. And of course, Marsoc wasn't able to get anywhere close because there's nowhere really to cap on that objective. And the defense, once they have their angles and they can make sure no one can cross those big wide open zones it's locked up especially at the top tier like this yeah it really is it's uh <clears throat> yeah. uh <laughs> this 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 whole this whole weekend is going to be like this you know it's just gonna be uh solid gains on both channels across the board and you know whether the outcome of a score line is 4-1 on a map or 4-2 whatever you you know three four whatever uh that series is going to be exciting and if you're a new player you can definitely learn a thing or two from these teams the way they coordinate the way that they uh have their plans hashed out in advance they know uh defensive styles and call those out during the action you know it, their familiarity with the game is unrivaled and you can really sort of get an understanding of how to utilize knowledge and uh and become a better onward player by watching these guys do just that as we hop into round three. Comes in, drummer drops back off of it, gets tagged up by the nade, confirmed by Brass in through the center. Now that opens up the cargo crate entry for this whole G-Men offense, which is what they needed to do. They needed to get these this, this forward pick. And now the hard part comes, trying to push out, trying to not get picked up by these nades. Now, yeah, nice big spam of grenades there to see if they could catch anyone. So I don't think uh, CT Bravo has an effective <laughs> knowledge of where most of G-Men are. And a nade catches Staycom, but a, a res should be able to come out. G-Men are going to use that time to push forward and catch Diesel. Big 
Tom gets picked up. Objective wide open. Only one defender going up against five. G-Man, he's being completely surrounded. He gets two, not before he gets picked up. And G-Man take a Marsoc round and go up to one. G-Man effectively using the distractions of the grenades to push forward, catch players out, and then just keep that momentum surging onto the defensive line. And <laughs> SEAL Team Bravo wasn't able to hold it. <sighs> and I mean, this is now maybe the start of some, you know, it's a spiral that still Team Bravo can't afford to get into. You know, G-Men have that Marasok round. Now they can potentially stack two rounds in a row with a Volk win on the, uh, if they can hold a, a tight D. Uh, and it's going to be up to SEAL Team Bravo to really answer to this call of adversity. You know, they got to bounce back from a from a tough Marsoc, uh, a tough Volk loss. They get kind of run over like that is not easy to, to uh, easy pill to swallow. Uh, and they have to come at this next round focused uh, and locked in and maintain. They, they can't tilt, basically, is, is what it comes down to. They can't afford to tilt right now because G-Men will then take the next the next map as well uh, with the momentum they can take off of uh, cargo here. So we'll see what SEAL Team Bravo do as we hop in to round number four. Kija gets traded there. Raz goes down on the back end, and we'll see if the Rez gets here in time. A nade comes in. That's a bad nade. That's going to confirm Kija by Zach, not where they wanted it. Here comes a couple of nades from the likes of SEAL Team Bravo up and over. Those don't find any purchase, but Drummer has pushed himself up through the tunnel and is now in a spot where he may be able to catch out any rotations. Lots of feeler grenades today, especially on cargo. It's a nice small map, so the, the explosion radius will take up a large section of it, so you can pretty much find the defense if you spam out two or three of them, and that's what we're seeing here. Zach swings, finds himself one in the center. Seal Team Bravo down to three. And then with four still up as shots do come in from Drummer and the Hondo, both ends. And now Drummer, after taking those shots, has dropped all the way back off of Tunnel. Two dead. And successfully finds Staycom and Hondo. Now the middle push is completely eliminated. It's all down to Drunk Drummer. It's a tough deal to try and push into a defense this aggressive and this tight. Oh, oh but a nade finds Brass. A feeler nade, too. He just kind of hucked that one over there. The man's going to head on over, pick up a syringe, get that res. Another grenade goes out. <laughs> oh, and it finds Zach Fontaine. They're going to be out of syringes soon enough. A damn good nade. Good. Not a lot of reses left for this G Men team, like you said. Drummer now has to find four kills, though, which is not going to be an easy task, and he's trying to approach from a tough side. There's a big wide open zone in front of him, and unless he moves into the center crates, he's going to get picked off by one of the two G Men on either side of that, whether it's brass to mouth or the man, or even Zach Fontaine. Uh, it's a tough deal to try and move that direction. But that's cargo. It's a small map. It doesn't give you many maneuver options, so you got to play to what you have, and Drunk Drummer's trying to move, make a play out of it. He's trying to make something happen. He's got 2 minutes and 20 seconds. He gets caught out, and they definitely know where he is now. <laughs> uh, 
unfortunate he didn't get tagged there, but yes, he is uh, probably most likely identified now on this rotation. It's going to be even harder for him to come across here. Brass to mouth really going to be a tough spot to uh, to root out alongside everywhere else. The man in the center, Zach. I mean, it's just the kill box he has to walk into is going to be... Uh, he has to have four guns shooting at four different angles. Zach finds it all the way from the corner of the defense. And G-Men take it. Lead advances up three to one now, and they are starting to run away just a bit with this map number one. Of course, it is important to remember that it is their map choice, so not incredibly shocking to see this, but they did take the map choice of boss fight away from them uh, last series so right now they're looking at a potential three uh undefeated maps going into their hands if they can get this next round on cargo but a uh, uh so far pretty commanding performance from g-man uh, they're able to use the momentum they gained from a lot of grenades being tossed randomly over and they'll just pe keep pushing on pushing in as hard as they can and that will catch portions of the defense off guard turn what could be kill boxes into 1v4s just because they're moving so quickly onto the defense that their teammates aren't able to get into position to support them. And that's really what you want to do when you're attacking a solid defense like that. Yeah, you you got to be capitalizing on mistakes. You know, you got to... It's, it's tough when you get those nade kills too, right? I mean, Drog, he had some great nade tosses, but they weren't full kills that could have been a 1v3 you know what i mean he could have been going into there a lot better off of those nade tosses but he couldn't get those confirms he couldn't follow up on them uh you know and it's just a, a, if anything he's got to remember how he threw those nades because those are those are going to be great nades for uh for future rounds those were really well tossed we'll see if there's any good nades that come out uh in our next round it seems we are having a bit of a technical uh moment here is still team bravo get everyone back into lobby so it will be a few before we dive into what could be map decider for gmat definitely in a great position to take this map especially yeah. with the objective all the way tucked back here this is probably one of the most defensible positions if you've got the numbers uh you can cap inside the crate you can cap outside the crate so once you start losing uh, a lot of your defensive numbers like go down to two hmm. even uh you really have a harder deal to try and protect both sides of that objective so we'll see if g-man could attack it successfully try and get the stb def defense uh off guard yeah i mean we'll they see. attacked this sort of you know the objective the way you approach this objective doesn't change a whole lot from the one that we just had you know it's the, the objective literally swaps sides of a crate uh, and so if they can mimic what they did so well uh, last round on offense, they, they are probably going to find success here uh, on our next round. And I wonder almost if SEAL Team Bravo are maybe going to bring in a sub here or try and change it up just a little bit. Uh, they do have sickness on their roster that they can tap into if they feel the need. Not going to be that, though. Full roster in place. We got Raz coming back in. And they should be ready to go soon enough. If you're either one of these teams, I mean, it's a long day. You know, there is... Uh, having subs does come in uh, pretty clutch. Uh towards that later half of the day. And I mean, right now even, after going three maps deep, could be good to bring in a, a sub next round. We'll see if that's something that happens, uh, excuse me, next map. But we got next round right here as we hop into round five. Just keep playing with Manor. Oh, look at this. Seal Team Bravo getting an aggressive defensive setup here. Three pushed up. Four, five. Everyone's up here. The man goes 
Swings a corner, finds Raz. Drunk reinforces the position. We'll see if the man's ready for it. Quick peeks the angle, finds another. A very aggressive defense. It's not paying off for them as G-Men have been able, been able to find almost all of them. It's all down to Diesel and stay calm on their little island over by the crates. But Brass to Mouth is successfully making it to the objective, but gets caught by Diesel, and Keija gets the refrag. All down to stay calm. My audio is fucking dark. I can't hear you. Into a 1v2. We'll see what stay calm can work out here. Heard comms from Keija, so has an idea of his position. Somewhere in the center there, and Nintendo's on a bit of a rotation, so these two won't be pushing up for a little while. Stay calm, staying calm in his position and yeah. waiting for them to come out. They know where he is now. The Nintendo. Came out. Uh, it wasn't enough. It was close to Nintendo, but Nintendo felt confident just holding the angle there. And I think he was hoping to catch someone off of a rotation from that nade, but doesn't. And G Men find their final kill and their final round of map one and go up 4 1. Solid first map there from G Men. Yeah. Using. <laughs> I want to say speed to their advantage. Every time they got someone downed or killed on uh, SEAL Team Bravo's side, they kept pushing forward, kept making sure that anyone who tried to come and get that res got punished for it. Yep. Yeah, they did They did a really, really nice job of uh, capitalizing off of their picks and moving quickly off of them. G-Men, just a, a commanding performance there. What was looking like maybe a potential from SEAL Team Bravo with that early round one W uh, just doesn't really ever happen again the rest of that map. And I'm curious to see how things work here on our next map, which is going to be Subway, picked by the likes of SEAL Team Bravo. Uh, I'm curious how they're going to square up against this team like G-Man that is good in close quarters like Subway. Yeah, I mean, the subway is a lot of alleyways, a lot of stairways. Uh, you, you can't really rely on long-range fire or cover fire, really, or suppression, because most of the time you're going to be fighting head-on-head -head battles or ambushes. And <laughs> we'll see how both teams deal with it. Uh, I think G-Men are probably a little more practiced in this kind of play, but we'll see. I mean, <laughs> SEAL Team Bravo is very much a wild card, and especially when it comes to the lone wolf tactic, Subway kind of excels at that. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. There's certainly some interesting routes you can take that you can kind of sneak through defensive lines uh, and find yourself right on top of objective. Of course, a veteran team like G-Men doesn't necessarily leave those kind of holes open on an objective, so not going to be something easy for this team, uh, for SEAL Team Bravo to sort of overcome, but... They they have to right now. I think three losses uh, in this stage might be a death sentence. I don't know if they're they're necessarily out just yet, and I think they have to play with that mentality. They have to play with maybe if we get three in a row here, we'll be right in par with another t with two other. T you know, I I, I it, we'll see we'll see what still Team Bravo can do, but they cannot afford to lose a fourth because I think if you once you lose four, you're you're most likely going to be out of the. Uh, <laughs> The contention for playoffs. We'll see how the pressure gets to him. Uh, onwards, a very big mind game. If yep. you're not focused on the game and you're worrying about, yeah, we just lost the last map, you're not focused on this map. And a team like G-Men or a team like SEAL Team Bravo, depending on who's more focused, can take advantage of that. Here we are moving on to round one. This guy. This guy. I think it was one of the good teams. They can't play the spawn. I'm going, just getting up to the dome. 
Looks like ST are investing in two into the basement and three pushed in from the alleyway. It's a tough alleyway to come in through because of all the utility that ends up getting tossed into it. Brass trying to throw a nade down lane, but doesn't actually get a good toss. He goes for the peak, does get tagged, but not down. So he's able to drop back, stay alive, get some information. And now Brass and Keija and the man all still lingering here. I'm wondering to see how long they're going to stay because they themselves are vulnerable vulnerable to nades as well. Do you see a Maltop going out? And I don't think it got anyone. No. Nope. No, I'm okay. I got it's right it. in front of the drummer. It did slow down the, the the offensive push. In the meantime, we have some shots coming in from Stay Calm in the center over towards Brass to Mouth. Actually finds the kill. Hondo's gonna swing up the stairs here and look for one as well. And they have lost control of the subway area. Tendo is still in a great oh, spot. Yeah. I mean, he can get any anyone who tries to cross that middle uh, or that last railway. He has a great view on it. And to be honest, trying to see a bulk member down at the end of those, you know, long tunnels with all those shadows is rather hard. You're going to be responding to fire more than you're aiming for a person. Keija peeks a corner, sees the shield, and drops back, getting information for his team to work off of. Diesel's gonna swing up over the top of the shield. He gets picked up, the nade comes in, it catches two, a huge nade from Drummer. Raz gets two, oh no, Raz is nade. He had Prime kills the two behind Drummer. And now suddenly we're into an awkward 2v2, Drummer and Stay Calm. Nintendo has to rotate. They've lost too many on objective. He's going to go down. Now it's a 1v2, a shield. And honestly, objective's open. Stay calm, can push in and cap on objective right now. Zach has to be able to challenge this. Oh, a Zach massive pickup. He's got to be wary. He has to check tablet. He's got to make sure that he knows he's the last one alive. And yes, he does. He's going to check the center. And see Stay Calm peeking through the small gap between the trash can and the wall and snags the kill. Seal Team Bravo get a Marsock win to start things off. The perfect way to kick off this round after losing map one. Yeah, especially on Subway. If you can hold your defense, especially with Seal Team Bravo, they can take this whole map. And Subway is one of those maps where it's small alleyways, small stairways, small little hallways that yeah. really lend itself to defense. And if you take a Marsock round early, that's a big, big advantage on this map. Yeah, it really is. And uh, granted, this objective is probably the most uh, capable or volatile objective out of any of them here on Subway. And so I'm not going to count G-Men out yet. You know, this, the, we got to give them their Marsock round because this objective is not easy to defend. No, it's it's really tucked into this one hallway with only two entrances, ultimately two entrances to it. And as you saw with G-Men's defense, they threw Nintendo out to sort of watch that back middle floor area. And even with one person in an ambush position, you can still lose that area. It's really, yeah. really hard to make sure that that whole middle floor is secure, considering there's a lot of maneuver that can go on. And the rest of your team really needs to worry about those north stairs. So many different spots to hold and even off of even with a team kill kill team bravo still managed to get that round and now we hop in to round number two we'll see what g-men bring to the offensive plate wait is, is it two zero right now yeah, no one restart, restart, restart. restart. Ooh. Ding, reset. Gives us a little bit of time to look at KDs. 3 and 0 from Stay Calm. That excellent nade coming in from, I believe, Drummer in the north. That was two. Now I think we are hopping in. 
Everybody okay. good? I'm trying to say I'm at 45. Okay. Hey Nintendo. Find a little yep. thing. You should be up here. Right 9945. Okay. 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 Flash actually comes out onto the corner there for uh -huh. Diesel to work himself up with, and... Stay alert, no, no, stay alert, Diesel, stay alert. Falling back. All slows down in the north as grenades get exchanged back and forth. I'm down, I grenade back up. You know, we do talk, we talk about this. The, the comms are open. Teams can hear these players communicating to each other. They can hear what people are saying. A good nade comes out and over a follow-up one doesn't get the man or the confirm on the Zach. So it is going to be a res from Brass to pick him back up. But they can hear each other. And so Hondo called out that he was downed off the nade as an idea to bait out the push. Because if usually when you down someone on that nade, you then go up for the confirm kill. Uh... G-men laughing that they that they read that, but I don't think they they would have if he had held on to the nade a little bit longer. Either way, Seal Team Bravo have not lost one, and it is still five five with three thirty left. Interesting to see how the man pushes around this corner. Honda has got such a strong position at that dumpster. It it's a tough push, that's for sure. Even for the guy that's coming around the corner for the <laughs> refrag, you're essentially running into barrels. With all the utility exchanged, I, I don't see much more coming out anytime soon. <laughs> oh no! Oh, shield up here. Come on, play with me. The man forces off Hondo's position there. Hondo doesn't want to contest. He doesn't want to remain exposed. Yep. All sorts of nade options could come down to him and he instead tucks in to pretty common spots. Like you said, though, a lot of utility has been used. So how many more frags and, and flashes do they have left to infiltrate this basement? And I mean, you really do need frags and flashes to make it down those stairs. You can see Hondo, Raz, Diesel. They're all sort of lined up waiting for the first man to come down. Even if even though the man has a shield, it's going to be a tough deal. They find one little part of his body, they're going to light it up. Skill Team Bravo also has that basement covered. You have Drummer tucked way back here, as well as uh, Staycom on the other end. So they have a bit of a, a crossfire for when eventually G-Men have to push up towards objective. The likes of Nintendo looking to get caught into that. But everyone else from G-Men is pushing in from the north. Trying to left here, left there. Got the flash beam. Even stacked up the way they are, it's not a big advantage in that tiny little stairway. The man's trying to draw fire and draw attention. Diesel comes out, puts some fire up there. Oh, and it begins. Really good job from that backup crew to find the hand onto the man. As soon as he went for the shots on that retreating corner defender, his teammates were picking up those uh, exposed positions. And I think they had a, I think they had eyes on him the whole time. I think there's a drone position somewhere here that's calling out all of these positions. Stay calm, Nintendo. Keisha all going down to Staycom's rifle, and they had the crossfire there. They were all drawn into Drummer, and Staycom just found the kills. Now G-Men stuck with this north push and only two left alive 35 seconds left on the clock there's no chance to reroute or go anywhere else they have to push down these stairs get the kills or get the cap That's and hondo finds brass as he tries to crawl down the stairs 
Shit. He's on objective. Pat He's on out. Objective. Oh, and Jesty B finds the last man and takes him down. Solid win from G or ST <laughs> Seal Team Bravo there. I mean, that was almost it. He had the he, if he had gotten the second kill there onto that north side, that's a cap. Because those two oh, yeah. that are defending in the center can't rotate fast enough. And so a, a very uh, big rotation from Raz. Good call out from Hondo telling him to go. And uh, still Team Bravo go up 2-0. I mean, that, that wasn't a lot of time to put the code in, but... He also didn't have time to engage that last SEAL Team Bravo member on objective. If he tried to go around the corner, get the kill, even spend a few extra seconds doing that, he wouldn't have had time to put the code in before the rest of that SEAL Team Bravo would crash down on the objective. So he had to go for the gamble there. He had to go, try and tuck in and put the code in or get shot. And then, well, he got shot. <laughs> Where are we moving? Our next objective into the basement, uh, the very bottom floor of Subway, the deep, dark trenches, uh, if you will. And curious to see how SEAL Team Bravo are going to attack this one. The defensive setup it can be pretty standard, or it could be aggressive on the underground. I wonder if SEAL Team Bravo are going to be ready for a potential G-Men counter push down there, because I've seen it before. G-Men are actually pretty good at attacking this objective. This is what I would consider one of the most defensible objectives. And here we are starting into round three. Yes, we are round number three. SEAL Team Bravo with a 2-0 lead looking to advance that a little bit more. But we'll see if they can do it as they have to go on the Marsoc again. And just because they've gotten one Marsoc round doesn't mean they're going to get all of them, that's for sure. We've seen a pretty consistent bit of trading uh, back and forth between both teams. And G-Men seemingly having some uh, trouble with load-ins because this is about the fourth or fifth reset we've watched from them. Uh, Perhaps an issue with brass to mouth because I did see him load back into the lobby real quickly, so maybe it was a communication mm. issue. Patiently waiting here for G-Man. I'm not sure what the holdup is. They didn't have a... Uh, they did have Brass DC, but he is there. I have the full team in, so hopefully we will be diving into our next round soon enough. I won't say now, because who knows? Well, the amount of resets we have uh, seems to be a commonality at this point, but maybe we'll be getting in to round three. Yeah. You mind if I put on the stairs one? It's pretty nasty. I can't eat. I'm gonna test it a little bit. Yeah, it's good. Really good. See brass to mouth trying to find the optimal angle to place the flashlight to distract the SEAL Team Bravo team as they come down. <laughs> He's trying to balance it on his knife. But that is part of the game, uh, trying to distract your teammate or your enemies from looking in the right direction 
so that your team can effectively ambush them from the side they're not looking. You can see the basement push coming in from SEAL Team Bravo consists of a shield and Raz. Not a heavy uh, focus coming in from that basement entry point, but they certainly seem to want to draw some attention. Diesel could swing up here and be popping up right into the middle of uh, Subway, but nobody is up on this floor, and so SEAL Team Bravo are taking their time working their way up to this objective, but until they get down into the basement and down onto this objective, they're not going to run into anyone on G-Men. Both teams using the flashlight to try and obfuscate the vision. But Steel Team Bravo effectively takes down the man and they're pushing into the out, out of the tunnels. Ninja finds Diesel, but a flash goes out. Oh, and Drummer is down by Diesel's grenade. A tough pill to swallow because they had Keisha flash there. It could have been the swing from Drummer to get it, but Drummer isn't completely dead, so he can be rezzed here. Raz can scoop him up, and the shield can come back into play. Yep, yep, yep. Get the shield, get the shield. He's got quite an option there. He doesn't just have the shield on him anymore. I think he can pick up a few rifles if he wants to. I can't see. What? Okay, I'm good now. Okay, one on the floor, one on the floor. The flashlight on the floor, blinding Raz just a bit as he tried to peek Blade out. Roll. Called out from Drunk Drummer and Raz with the nice shots up over the top. Finds okay, two. Brass it. and Zach go okay. down on objective. G-Men getting okay. picked up here piece by piece. Now Keisha and Nintendo, the final two to hold on. Up against four alive SEAL Team Bravo offensive players. Granted, it's really a 2v1 right now as Keisha swings out challenges, finds the first kill. Gonna continue to push up. Raz now alone in the 1v1. Still no movement from the rest of his team. Uh, stay calm and Hondo playing it too slow. Yeah, this is a perfect example of why, you know, just because you have three or four members of your team up, you need to move as one. You need to attack as one, because right now this is a 1v2. Raz could spot Keisha here, but Keisha's blending in to this pillar. Finally spots oh. him. Down he goes, yeah, and now Nintendo... The only one left alive to defend objective, and he's in the right spot. He's not going to allow a cap. You're going to have to kill him if you want to punch in anything. And so SEAL Team Bravo, at the most, can only get one round, one point here. I mean, no matter which way he fires, he's going to reveal his position, and the rest of SEAL Team Bravo can crash on him. Whether he, whether he can actually make the shots quick enough, you know, that's up to him. Raz will see Tendo soon enough. If that was a flash. Nintendo would have been completely caught out. Raz does spot him there, finally, and Nintendo goes down, distracted by the remaining SEAL Team Bravo that finally started to show up, albeit a bit too late, as they do get that third round and continue to pile on a bit of a lead here. SEAL Team Bravo, really, really strong showing there. Yeah. I mean, a few incidences, I'm not going to say mistakes, because what are you going <laughs> to do when a, you're pulling the pin of a grenade and suddenly you go down? You yeah. can't pick that back up. That's right. not a mistake. That's just tragedy. Uh, but despite that, SEAL Team Bravo effectively pushed on and kept getting kills, especially out of that tunnels, getting the res, making sure that, you know, they had the shield down and Raz was just getting call outs and getting kills. Every time a call out came out, he found another member of G-Men. And that's what you want to do. That's how you attack that objective. You just keep yeah. playing the defense piece by piece. Yeah. A, uh, a good whittling down of that defense there by SEAL Team Bravo. And really done by just two people. You know, <laughs> that, was yeah. a, that was by and large a 2v5. Uh, the push out there, all the kills never had that backup from the rest of their team and now we'll see if they can hold on to this round as we dive in to round four. Ah, look at that. Now there's the restart. 
How many resets? A lot of resets from the G Men side. Very yeah. interesting. Not sure what the logic is there, but I'm sure someone will tell us. Oh my, another okay. reset. Yeah, that's why I didn't dive into that round intro. <laughs> uh, gonna wait them out and make sure we are gonna get into this round before uh, anything happens. It does look like we have a drop there, so a quick reconnect from G-Men hopefully would solve whatever issue they're having over there. I seem to be having some sort of rifle bug issue. Uh, we've seen it happen to Viper mid combat, and it ultimately uh, could have resulted in that that loss on objective on downfall for them. And so, I think uh, you know. You have to check everything. You got to make sure your rifle can be loaded. You have to make sure your gun can shoot. You know, there's all sorts of things you have to make sure are working before the start of a round because you don't want to get caught off guard. You don't want to get into that spot where suddenly your gun isn't working. We good? good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. good. Brass, can we harass this basement? Wait, Pete, do your gun you on your push back? Hard? Okay. okay. Yeah, I want to wipe it. Okay. Okay. I'll go with you. Back! Uh, I'll go with you. All right. I feel like we're giving them too much time. If, if we just right. overwhelm them, you know what I mean? Yeah. They, I never, agree. they never done well, the overwhelming. It just pitch hard. Alright, I'll take your lead. Looks like a pretty standard defense from SEAL Team Bravo, just tucking in, making sure they can hold the last level. There's only three entrances to this last level, so it's a smart thing to do. You can at least cover two of them pretty effectively with most of your team looking one direction. And that's pretty much what they're doing. Hondo, yep. Diesel, and uh, Staycom are sitting over by the objective and just making sure that most of these stairways are, are covered. He's just trying to push out of the tunnels. Two. There's two there. Coming up. Three. Three. He gets punished for it. And both G-Men who make it out of the tunnels the effectively go down. Raz dies in the process, but SEAL Team Bravo came out with a profit. Yeah, getting down the top fragger there for G-Men is also pretty important. And now it's up to just the Shield and Nintendo, uh, the Shield Duo and Nintendo to work themselves down these stairs, which I think might be their better approach, honestly. If they could come down and threaten Staycom, they scoop him up, and then it's a bit of a battle back from SEAL Team Bravo to make sure that they don't lose objective control. I mean, that's the trick. Don't lose objective control, because once the, you know, the churn around the objective starts happening and your team starts crashing back on defense, it, anything could happen at this point. No one's sitting in their defensive positions. Uh, sight lines and overlapping fields of fire are essentially muddled at that point. No one really knows who's covering what until things calm down. That is, of course, only if G-Men can sort of sow that distraction, if they can manage to push in from the right spots at the right times. I think they have some utility available. This up, this uh, middle floor group should not have invested in uh, any early utility usage, so they're going to make their push. The nades and flashes are going to come out on this entry point. Flip side of that is Drunk Drummer is now flush with utility. <laughs> he has Keijas, Razes, and, you know, the last person who died there, mm -hmm. like, he's sitting on a ton of utility. So if need be, he can just start chucking grenades like it's candy. Oh, the man has his shield, checks the angle, gets a great flash onto shut Hondo. Down. That's going to shut down his vision. They know Hondo's there. 
but they don't know Drummer's there. So if they atta attack Hondo first, Drummer can get the refrag because he has a beautiful angle into that hallway. Hondo oh, no, took get, a shot. Yeah, just a little one, though. The pistol doesn't do too much damage. It's a multiple shot gun to kill somebody. And so Hondo's able to drop down, don't count, syringe don't himself count, up, and rotate just a bit. Doing the right thing. He's backing off, staying away from the people who are attacking down that stairway, trying to force them peek a little further out so Drunk Drummer can actually get the kill. They have a great crossfire on this. It's not going to be easy for the man and Zach to push themselves out here. No, not at all. I kind of like this move Hondo's going with. He's actually going to try and snail his way up to a more... Uh, He's going to have a, a more exposed angle onto Zach, but Zach able to ID the toes there of him trying to make that prone push and finds one kill. Now they have to only worry about Drummer on their exit, uh, and they are whittling away this defense effectively. 3v3 is a much more solid position to be in when attacking this objective. Forty-five seconds left. As soon as we get to 30 seconds and that beep goes out, the chaos will begin. We will see G-Man do a solid, solid push in about five, four, three, two, one. Here they go. All eyes drawn to the wrong side, too. Now they've rotated very well. They find one. Objectives exposed. Shots ring in over the shoulder. Zach gets up drummer trying to rotate out. Exactly what we talked about once you lose objective control. Things get hairy, and a excellent bit of rotating off the stairs there from G-Men completely catches SEAL Team Bravo off guard. One point on the board, and that was a solid rotation. They realized that trying to go down the stairs they were trying to force before wasn't a good idea. They'd drawn too much attention to themselves and re-rotated before SEAL Team Bravo could even, you know, adjust to that. They were gone. Whew. This uh, third map here, fourth map of the day, certainly a solid one. Steel Team Bravo doing well to go up against the likes of G-Men, but ultimately not quite enough just yet. They're on the cusp. Uh, they're going to have to take a Marsoc round now or defend and secure their Volk round next. They are going to be moving up into an objective that is capable. If G-Man can hold on to this defensive round, it gets a little dicey for the likes of SEAL Team Bravo. Think G-Man is not out of this just yet. No, I mean, G-Man is a solid team, and they can certainly come back from this, especially with the objective now being in a new position all the way on the middle floor. Mm -hmm. uh, a rather, I mean, it does seem rather open, but this is actually a very capable position considering there's a lot of exit ways that lead right to it. Exit and entrance ways, I should say. Round number five. Seemingly starting. Just, just be halfway on the stairwell. If I get flashed, they're going to push. It'll probably be an easy kill for you. Let's see so what the defense looks like. Pressure. Standard setup. Gotta yeah, get a gander what the right. offensive push down. consists of, and it is gonna be three in the basement. is gonna spot him out right away, and shots coming in from Diesel. Raz gonna continue his push up, and they're gonna try and pinch Keija inside this hallway here. A great name toss comes his way. Keija swings and snags Diesel. He's coming, he's coming. Ultimately, a effective turnover here if Steel Team Bravo can confirm Keija. Well, they should have no problem doing that unless Tendo goes for a big push, and there it is. A confirm from Raz. Yeah, uh, really, uh, it would be a pretty aggressive move for Nintendo to charge down those stairs at this point. A little bit easier for him to simply defend from the stairwell, and he's going to take a spot up against the doorway. 
and really tuck himself in, try and avoid any nades that come up through it. I'll probably have to come back to this position because I don't imagine Drummer's going to work his way up these stairs quite yet. No, and I think the real threat right now is stay calm coming down the north stairs. I mean, yeah, brass to mouth is, we'll be able to see the cross there, but if stay calm makes it past that. You can effectively run onto the objective and get into a really nice capping spot. Endo finds Drummer as he tries to move out of the tunnels. Nintendo was tucked in enough for the flash didn't go, didn't clear uh, that corner and he wasn't caught out and the swing from the shield gets shut down and now Nintendo has a shield on objective. Oh, Hondo finds Brass with a headshot, clearing out the overpass stairwell, and Stay Calm is moving in slowly and surely without any of the G-Men noticing. Oh, and there it is. Stay Calm reveals his possession. Daycom radios in where Tendo is, but I don't think anyone can help besides perhaps Raz, but the man Tendo finds him and no refrag comes out from Staycom. Can't find the back of the man there, just misses him as he rotates back into the trains. Hondo is able to get a kill though, finds the man inside there, and so now it's a 2v2. Oh, <laughs> Alright, I got another Tango. All right, I got another tango one. Some good communication coming out. Hondo rotating around, trying to get a better angle on this. He's definitely safe coming down those stairs. Minute 15 left. <laughs> they are successfully navigating this whole area. So SEAL Team Bravo is in a great place. They know where Zach Fontaine is. They know where Tendo is. And they're trying to pin him back and get at least a breach of because they stay up and get up and get the cap. Oh. But they find both of the last SEAL Team Bravo members and take them down. Nintendo supports Zach on the back end. Shoots uh, the pusher onto Zach and then gets the second kill. A nice coordinated attempt from SEAL Team Bravo, but G-Men hang on with their crossfire and go up. 3-2 well, here. They push uh, that, that gap a little closer. Now they got to be thinking cap going into this next objective. And if you're SEAL Team Bravo, you know, all you have to do is snag a Volk round, but G-Men are not going to make it easy. No, and this is not one of the easiest objectives to defend. Yeah, you can set up some pretty good crossfire lanes, but most of you are going to be off the objective, so if someone does get within range, they can just hunker down and put the code in before you even get into a viable angle to prevent that. Yeah. Out of all the objectives on Subway, I think I've seen this one get capped on more than any of them, just because right. the defense has to spread. So many different entry points that you have to be concerned about. And when it comes down to it, it also has some capable spots. You know, not every objective has little corners you can hide behind and cap on. You know, there's some that are out in the open. This is definitely one that has a few little nooks and crannies that you can tuck behind and cap and avoid lines of sight from certain defensive positions. Here we uh, another reset. Uh, I did get communication on the reset issue, and apparently one of the G-Men members is having audio issues. Uh, I think Steel Team something... Bravo reset that time, though. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. Uh, I guess it wasn't G-Men's fault this time, so Steel Team Bravo is definitely allowed resets just as much as G-Men is. So it happens. 
You just got to deal with the issues and move forward. Yeah, that's good that the, you know, it's important if you are at this level that you're paying attention to everything, that you're making sure your gun can reload, that you can hear each other, that everyone is moving, you know, that everything is working as intended because, again, you don't want to get caught with your pants down when you're in a key moment where you need your rifle and you can't reload the gun. Yeah, I mean, any one of those issues can yeah. basically muck up a whole round. And, I mean, VR, <laughs> definitely a lot of things to consider there. Yep. And so it begins round number five. Oh, <laughs> Another reset happens. Again, if you're new, you're learning something. <laughs> well, needed that guy. The good thing is, it sounds like they haven't practiced this much and hadn't had this issue, so that's a good thing. Yeah. Because we practiced it a lot. Oh, what? God. Oh. <laughs> it's like taking timeouts for field goals. <laughs> All right. So mean to me, man. Pick your step, Everybody. Pick your step. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Easy code. Okay. Easy code. Is it? Does it change? Six two five seven thousand. Six two five seven thousand. Maybe we should go for this round. Um. Looks like a full basement press. And a limited basement defense from SEAL Team Bravo. Alright, there's somebody down here. He sounds like he's on the south side by Keep It Fast. Yeah, you can be south track, too. You can hear it through the floor. Okay. Looks like all of the members of G-Men are stacking up and trying to sort of push shot. from the same direction <laughs> out of the tunnel. Tendo guarding the rear. Basement. I'm gonna move to OBJ. Raz hears quite a few footsteps in his stairwell. He drops back and is able to get out of there in time. Danger for SEAL Team Bravo here is if they lose their few defenders on the objective, Diesel and Drunk Drummer are really far away. They're essentially going to have to get kills on the way to the objective. You can't step with another man's captain. Yeah, I can. Damn it, track! Track, track! 
Hondo calls out the tunnel push, and the rest of SEAL Team Bravo respond. Are we getting flanked? No. They all see the shield. They know Hondo's back on this corner position, but Hondo's taking a very tight angle. He's going to wait for them to push up that ramp up towards the objective. He doesn't want to expose himself. Raz gets scooped up by Keija. No tries to take shots. He gets instantly picked up by Zach. Diesel able to get one over the top of the shield. Keija goes down. Trying to cap. I gotta get this revive. There is no revive. Good. Watch the cover. This is a whole team here, though, and like they're like the call out was was. They are definitely trying to cap. They want to get someone up here to punch in the code. Diesel maintaining a key position to deny that. As is that. drunk drummer. Yeah, they all essentially have triangulated the position, the objective, but Tendo finds stay calm as Zach Fontaine finds Diesel, and this could be a cap. Yeah, it's going to be. The pad's out here from Nintendo. He's not ID'd by Drummer. It's coming in, and G-Men are able to bounce back from a 3-0 deficit and take the second map, remain undefeated. A, uh, what a excellent job of them commanding that objective space and then utilizing it to get that cap. I mean, they, they bunched up, and I, I thought for sure, stacking up, coming out of the tunnel, bad idea. Yeah. But they Let's effectively see. just started wiping out the Steel Team Bravo defense, forcing the more peripheral defenders to come back and try and get basically positions that weren't ideal. And it came back <laughs> to bite them. I mean, there's just so many on objective that how can you fight that ball of death? Quite a, uh, a a rebound there from G-Man. And if you're SEAL Team Bravo, this one's going to sting a little bit. You know, you're down now four maps uh, going into your last series. Essentially, count it, uh, your season uh, wrapped up here after this one. You still got to play two more uh, up against... Uh, I'm not sure who it is over on VRML. But either way, we're going to be back here with more G-Men games. They'll be facing off against the likes of Mayhem, I imagine. So they are the last team that we ha uh, has not played G-Men. So that's going to be a great series. Do not go anywhere. We will be back with more games after this brief intermission.